Thank you, Mary and Jessica and Judy for such wonderful readings tonight. And thank you all for coming out. I'm reading from my book, Out of the Kitchen, which is entirely a book about labor. It was written to kind of capture the two and a half years I worked for Kentucky Fried Chicken. I was 15 and a, a little bit until I was 18. And so it captures those years. It was quite a rough going, actually as you'll see a bit in these poems. I have uh, three poems to read. Uh, the first is about an activity we did endlessly. It's called Breaking Bird. You break the thighs, that's all. A quick snap like you imagine any bone forced from the joint it's bedded in, might give to pull and twist and pop. The raw meat under your fingers, cool to the touch, like water in the shade of a cliff face that never feels the sun, like moss on the underside of a deadfall off a quiet path. The skin thick like the tongue of a work boot. Nothing like anything once alive should feel. Sliding and sucking in the tightening grip of your thumb. But that is last. First, there is the tail. Nub of useless stump that feathered the fat and bony end of these inept flyers, and you crank it once, twice, mostly never three times, till it gives way in your pinch, and you toss it off into the growing pile in the trash, where these clips of skin and bone collect, each looking like the first joint of a fleshy thumb that's lost its nail. Naked now, unable to grasp even the smallest thing. The second poem I'm going to read tries to capture what these days were like. Um, this was this speaks to what I went through over and over. It's called In the Hall of the Mountain King. The grease wore me like a golem child, cousin raised from clay, blood, and sweat, melting all night to a puddle for morning. Sixteen-hour summer shifts pressure frying cemeteries worth of bird for the colonel, closed each day near midnight with steam hoses, then a joint or two blazing beneath the empty parking lots, bug-crowned lights. At home in the basement cave, I'd help build separate from bumper pool and foosball, I locked my flimsy door, stripped off the red and white striped shirt, pride free steel toe boots, peeled away sodden jeans and socks and shorts from my fish white puckered flesh. I tasted bleach in my dreams. But I was wired every night, nailed between deep fatigue and adrenaline, like the pine two by fours and wallboard that slapped up this refuge. 
Sometimes turkey dope and whiskey cut, be cut behind the edge of tension. Our family doctor prescribed useless soma for then quaaludes. Let's see. Get these. Then quaaludes that friends on the bus crushed up to snort on the long ride over to Horace Mann Junior High all spring. But these summertime 70 hour weeks cashed in overtime and nothing else. Then one morning I remembered the great Boyg and Song of Norway, a forgettable film I'd seen with my grandmother almost eight years before. And I went out, bought Grieg's incidental music for Peer Gent. She had died that April, and I felt like death, felt like a buried child lost under a mountain. And this troll song, this unlikely lullaby, bassoons and cellos, stillness and stuttering forward, the frenzied rising to timpani rumble and cymbal explosions excavated my mind from its stone tomb. The last poem I'm going to read is a little longer. It details the worst experience I ever had at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, it's, it, it actually did make for the most difficult poem I've ever written because to write this poem, I had to reimagine this experience and it was not a good thing. So this is, uh, this takes its title from a term that's used to describe a certain type of very serious burn. Um, its title is Full Thickness. New oil has a deceptive beauty, a pool shimmering gold deep as the mystery of heat. Hiding the kiss of flame, no smoke point short of 500 degrees to warn the unsuspecting cook of danger, pain, the potential to burn, so great, so certain, yet unseen until an accidental touch becomes another level, a new understanding. I wasn't tired, no excuse of fatigue, my shift barely beginning when I started another quiet Saturday with the mid-afternoon headed toward busier evening and close. And I was touching up the lunch crew's leavings, a little flour here, trays in the sink to wash, and the fryer needing a scraping to clear off the crust left above the line where the chicken turned crisp in the dark bath. But this fryer had clean new oil, and I wondered why the cook before me put the white blocks of vegetable oil into a fryer with this dirty ring around its collar. Still, it looked cool when I slid the scraper down the stainless steel wall, and what I thought was hard and cooked on wasn't. My hands forced finding no resistance and I was suddenly immersed in the purest heat I hope I'll ever know. My hand and half my forearm plunging into a full 400 degrees. Later they would show me the place on the wall 
where the scraper I threw across the room stuck. Better than any shuriken or sharp throwing knife I played with as a boy ever did. But in those first moments, after I knew nothing but the sure sense, the fire consumed every feeling I had until only searing, self-immolating pain, a pain I still see in my mind, as the most primal, howling, whimpering thing, wanting nothingness, death, relief from every hurt balled up in this one hurt, this shrieking erasure of all self, all sense of being. The next thing I knew from that moment was I sat back in the walk-in cooler, my burned hand in a plastic bag filled with ice, and I was breaking chicken, waiting until a replacement cook came in to take my place, still on the clock. I suppose I was in shock, must have agreed to this though I really don't recall anything between the burn and the time I looked down at the raw chicken in my hands, my hand in the sack of ice, and thought the meat looked better, closer to being alive. The crease between my thumb and index finger, overcooked like a chicken wing too long in the fryer. Then the colors that no skin should ever have, leading up to the enormous boil on my arm. Something wrong that left me thinking, this couldn't be mine, be part of me. And I stared and broke the chicken thighs until that boil broke and all the fluids and blood and skin filled that bag of ice. And I got up and left my job to find someone, anyone in the store who could clean my wounds, put something over this now scoured new thing that was my arm before the air brought back the pain, wrap me up like something neither living nor dead until my father or mother could come and take me home again. Thank you.